Um, so today we are going to talk about how climates change over time. Um, as you know, the first few weeks of this class, of this unit, are going to be um, the basics about climate change. Um, so today we're not going to get into anything too specific about climate change. We're just going to look at how we know that climates have changed over time. This is part of the basics, the climate change basics. Um, the warm up for today is, <clears throat> do you think climates can change over time? Why or why not? So go ahead and answer that on Google Classroom. Um, and then let's get into uh, today's agenda. So um, we just did the warm up. Next, we're going to quickly recap uh, weather versus climates, climate, and then we're going to talk about changing climates. Um, then we'll introduce paleoclimatology, and finally, we will do our exit slip. The focus question for today is how have climates changed over time? The learning target is I can use evidence to explain how climates have changed over geological time. Geological time is referring to, uh, to really long periods of time um, in Earth's history. So we're talking about thousands, millions, or even billions of years. Um, and so over thousands or up to millions of years, we're going to explain how climates have changed today. All right, so really quickly, a quick recap of last class. Uh, what is the difference between weather and climate? So weather changes by the minute, hour, or day, um, and it includes things like wind, temperature, visibility. Uh, visibility is how well you can see. So that's, you know, more or less how foggy it is. Um, air pressure and humidity. Whereas climate is the average weather over time um, and is specific to a region and is used to make a prediction about future weather events. So climate is very long term. Um, it's very general. So it says generally uh, the, the weather here is blah, blah, blah. So it's always describing a, something general or something on average. Um, and it's not very specific. So it's not going to say on Tuesday, it's going to be sunny and, um, and warm. It says generally in the summer, uh, it is sunny and warm. Um, and so the weather can actually change a little bit day by day within the climate. Uh, but we can use climate to make predictions about what the weather might be like in the future. Cool. So let's get into changing climates. Um, so today we are going to look at data from two American cities. Miami, Florida, and Los Angeles, California, to understand how climates have changed in the past 100 years. So we're going to start by looking at um, how climates have changed recently, and then we'll look at Earth's uh, much longer history. So here is Miami, Florida. Here is Los Angeles, California. What do you think their climates are like? Based on what you know, what do you think these, these, these climates might be like? What kind of weather do you think they experience a lot? So Florida, um, Miami, Florida, it's probably hot and humid. Um, it's probably pretty rainy um, and, and definitely hot. Um, it's closer to the equator. It's surrounded by water. Uh, you, we know that hurricanes come from the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so it's probably pretty hot and humid most of the year. Los Angeles, California, on the other hand, is probably hot and dry. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's in a more arid part of the United States, which just means dry. There are lots of deserts in this region. Um, and there is not a lot of precipitation coming off from the, uh, off of the Pacific Ocean. Um, and as we know, Los Angeles, well, as we know, California is experiencing a drought right now, um, which means that for the past few years, they have not had water, they've not had rain. Um, so, uh, it is pretty hot and dry. So for both of these cities, we're going to take a look at, um, we're going to take a look, we're going to, my face. We're going to take a look at, okay, um, we're going to take a look at some, there we go. All right. 
we're going to take a look at some climate data for these two cities. So we're going to look at two charts that look exactly like this. The first one for Miami, the second one for Los Angeles. Um, first, before we try to make sense of these charts, um, I want to talk about what information we even have in the charts. So first of all, we should look at the title. The title is Climate Data for Miami, Florida. Okay. Um, within this chart, there are actually two charts. One is for the years 1901 to 1930. The other is for the years 1981 to 2010. The information we're provided is month of the year. So we've got January all the way to December for both these charts. And then on the y-axis, we have temperature in degrees Celsius and precipitation in centimeters. Precipitation, as a reminder, precipitation means any water that's falling from the sky. So that could be rain, snow, sleet, hail, anything like that. Um, and then we have this legend here that says the blue bars are average precipitation. Um, and then the red bar, the red line is average temperature. So we are dealing with averages here. Um, since all of this data is from 1901 to 1930, that means they combined all the precipitation and temperature data for those years and then found the averages. So these are the average. So um, for these years, the average precipitation in January was, was this. The average precipitation was this, and so on. And it's the same for every year, for 1981 to 2010. So in class, we kind of talked about this data and we um, looked, we, we wanted to see if we could see, no. We looked at what differences there are between these two graphs. Um, so some major differences, um, generally, the average temperature is higher in this graph, only a little bit, but still higher. Um, and then we saw that for each month, the average precipitation was different. Um, so for example, January, here the average precipitation was around four centimeters, while here the average precipitation in January was about five centimeters. Um, and each month was kind of like that where the precipitation was different, um, especially May. So in 1901 to 1930, average precipitation in May was about 12 centimeters, whereas in the second graph, the average precipitation for May was about nine. So it's a pretty big difference. Um, and yep, so we just tried to make sense of these graphs. Um, but the major takeaway was that from this graph to this graph, first, the average temperature went up Second, um, the, precip the precipitation changed, um, sometimes in pretty big ways, mostly in pretty small ways. And then we did the same thing for Los Angeles, California. So these are the same graphs, same kinds of graphs, just for LA. Um, and again, one, well, actually before I talk about it, I would like you to pause it, pause this video, to see um, what information you can, uh, you can understand from these graphs. But the things that I understood were first is that um, the average temperature, just like in Miami, the average temperature has gone up a tiny bit across the year. It's hard to see because these the differences are so small, but it has gone up. Um, and second, the precipitation, the amounts of precipitation has changed a little bit. Um, from graph to graph, but um, there's not really, there's not necessarily a pattern per se, um, or not one that I could see. If you see one, that's great. I hope there's a pattern here. Um, although there is a pattern that a student made, that a student noticed in class today, and that is generally, not always, but generally, when temperature is up, precipitation is down. Interesting. So here, temperature is high, precipitation is low. Same thing here, high temperature, low precipitation. Whereas we have low, low temperature, higher precipitation. Same thing here. Um, anyway, the point of these graphs is to show that over the past 110-ish years, these climates have changed. They've gotten warmer and the precipitation um, patterns have changed a little bit too. Now, what if we look, what if we wanted to know how um, climates have changed over a much longer period of time. Um, so if we want to know 
how climates have changed over a much longer period of time, we're actually gonna look at geological time, which refers to the timing of events in Earth's history. It can be thousands, millions, or even billions of years long. So this is really long time. It's because the Earth is really old. If we consider geological time, what changes in climate do you think we might see? For instance, has the climate here always been what it is now? The short answer, no. Um, the, the Earth's climate, the Earth's atmosphere has changed a lot over the past 4.5 billion years. Um, but also where we are right now, Lowell, is not where Lowell has always been on the Earth. So even just like what, 500 million years ago, um, we, all the continents were one continent called Pangaea. Um, and so I don't know where low, oh, okay. So here's North America or here's what will become North America. It looks like, so we are probably right here, which might be, hmm, I don't know where this is. Um, or I don't know which way is the North pole, but needless to say, it looks pretty deserty. Um, we can guess that probably, uh, the, uh, our climate was much different than it is now especially if this truly was a desert. All right. Um, and so we don't, but like to know how the Earth's climate has changed, we need data, right? And um, if we're talking about geological time, thousands, millions, or even billions of years, how do we know what the climate was like before? The short answer is we don't know exactly, but we have pretty good guesses. No one was there to, to, take, um, to take measurements of, of the climate, but we can use something called paleoclimatology to figure out what the climates were like, what, our, what Earth's climate was like, Earth's atmosphere was like. Paleoclimatology uh, can be broken into three parts. Paleo, which means ancient, climate, which means climate, and then ology, which means study of. So paleoclimatology is the study of ancient climates. Um, and so we use paleoclimatology to answer this question. How do we know what the climate was like in the past? So like I said, paleoclimatology is the study of climate before there were records for temperature, precipitation, and other data. Um, no humans were there millions, thousands, millions, or billions of years ago. So we have to find other ways, other creative ways to know what the climate was like. Um, and so these other sources of data are called proxies. Um, and the proxies are, um, are just different sources of evidence uh, for, for what the climate was like thousands, millions, or billions of years ago. So um, I'm gonna walk you through some different proxies that we have. Um, and how we use them. So the first one, the easiest one for us really is historical accounts and data. So um, we have data for about the last thousand years for how the climate was. Um, and uh, that's because we can look back at like ships logs or farmers logs, so uh, like journals that ships and farmers kept. We can look at travelers diaries. We can look at newspaper reports. Um, we can look at other things that humans have written. So this is this part's really easy for us. We just have to read and understand uh, what data all you know people before us, our ancestors, were collecting. Um, but if we don't have that, if we want to go back further than a thousand years, we have to start looking at other ways, um, other things. So next, we can look at tree rings. So as you guys probably know, every year a tree grows um, and it grows one ring on the inside. No, 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 no. Okay, forget that. So as you guys know, trees, uh, when they grow, they form rings. So if you cut a tree down and you look at the piece of wood that you have, it's gonna have a bunch of rings. Each ring means one year of that tree's uh, life. Um, and that's because the trees grow in the summer and they stop growing in the winter and so when they stop growing they uh the the ring the wood becomes really thick um and that's just the way that trees trees grow so if um 
if a tree is growing in a very warm summer, very warm climate, the ring is going to be really wide. And that's because it's going to grow a lot because it's the, the, the weather is just so nice. Um, it can grow very easily. If the weather is pretty cold, if the climate is pretty cold, then the ring is actually going to be really narrow. And that's because it just can't grow as well. So what we can do is we can look at these tree rings to kind of understand what the weather was like, what the climate was like um, in each of these years. So for example, if we look here, um, this log has some pretty thin rings between 1940 and 1955-ish. Um, and so that means that in, in those years, the weather wasn't so good for growing trees. Um, whereas between like 1970 and 1980, the rings are much thicker, which means those years were really nice for, for growing. Um, so this can give us some clues about the climate, especially because some trees can live up to a thousand years. Um, or uh, we have like fossilized trees that we can look at too. Very similarly, corals and coral reefs uh, also form rings. And those rings, again, if they're very thick, we know that it was a good year, a good climate for growing. Um, it was pretty thin, pretty narrow. That means we know that it's like it was not great for, um, for the growth of that coral. So again, we can just look at the, the rings. I know this is really hard to, to see, um, but um, essentially, again, thin rings mean it was kind of a poor climate that time, poor, poor climate for a period of time. And then if it's thicker, then that means uh, um, the climate was much, much better. And then another thing that we can look at is really cool, ice cores. So ice is located in polar ice caps. So like the North Pole, the South Pole, and on tops of mountains. And in these places, it's so cold that the ice doesn't really ever melt. So the ice builds up over millions of years as it continues to snow. And so when the snow falls and forms into ice, it actually traps um, small bubbles of the atmosphere uh, at that time. And so if we can drill down into the ice and pull out a long like tube of ice, we can see different layers that, um, that correspond to different times in, in Earth's past. Um, and they can give us some really good clues as to what was going on um, in the past. So these things are called ice cores. And, uh, and you can see um, this one right here actually has a really dark layer. And that's because there was a lot of volcanic ash in the atmosphere when this formed. So a volcano had just erupted. It was spewing all this, uh, all this ash into the atmosphere. And that got trapped in the ice. Um, you can also see here on this ice core, you can see the lighter, the lighter rings, the darker rings. You got this really dark ring here. All of this can provide us a lot of data about what was happening in the atmosphere. Um, they also have small bubbles of carbon dioxide. So we can tell how much carbon dioxide was in the air too. So all of this means that we can piece together more or less um, what the Earth's temperature was and how much carbon dioxide there was in the air um, over the past like 400,000-ish years. Um, and I think we have more data beyond that. But um, so here is a graph. Uh, the green is carbon dioxide and then the blue is temperature. And you can see they kind of follow each other, or rather, when carbon dioxide is up, so is temperature, and carbon dioxide is down, so is temperature. Um, you can see it kind of goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, until we get near the present where it just keeps going up. That's because humans are adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, which is something we'll talk about in the upcoming classes. But um, this shows that climate change is it's kind of a cycle. Um, that um, uh, it's normal for carbon dioxide to go up, carbon dioxide and temperature to go up and down, up and down. What's not normal is this giant spike we've got going on right here. And it's also happening very quickly. These are all pretty slow changes. This one's very fast and we should be worried. Um, so uh, this kind of proves that climates do change over time. 
over geological time too, which leads me to the exit slip. So um, today's exit slip is how have climates changed over time? Use evidence to support your answer. So you are going to, well, to get full credit, your answer must include two things. First, it must include an explanation or a description of how climates changed over geological time. It must also include evidence. Um, and the evidence can come from the graphs that I showed you in class. Um, so if you click on the exits that post in Google Classroom, there's gonna be a Google Slides PowerPoint. That PowerPoint's gonna have the charts that I showed you in class. So evidence just means uh, data. So look at those graphs, pull some information that proves that climates have changed over time, right? If you have any questions, you can leave a comment on Google Classroom and I will get back to you. Um, otherwise, I hope to see you in class next time. Bye.